Hi there, Year 4. Today is our history lesson and we are going to be learning about Viking longboats and then having a go at designing one. Now, I hope you've been enjoying learning about the Vikings um, through our English and the raids. And maybe some of you have also looked at the Jorvik Viking Centre website to find out some more. Um, but this is, a, we're in particular going to be looking at the way they travelled, okay, because they were very, it, at the time that they were around, they were the sort of first people of their time to come in these very large ships, and that's what made them so able to get to different places and then attack. So write down the date and Walt in your books, and then pause the video so you can get that done. Remember, beautiful, neat, joined up handwriting and underlined. Okay, before we begin, we have got a little bit of a starter. Now, this is thinking back to some of the work we did in the last half term, because we swap over history and geography. And although this has nothing to do with Viking longboats, I wanted just to recap on whether we can remember the continents and the oceans of the world. So what I would like you to do is um, you can either print one of these little maps off, or you can just look at the screen and in your own mind be pointing to where the seven continents are and the five main oceans. Pause the video, have a little go at that. Well done, let's see how many you managed to get correct. Did we remember that on this side we have North America and South America, Europe, and obviously there's where we live, that little island there, Europe, and underneath Europe we have Africa, Asia's the really big one towards the right-hand side of this map, and then we've got Australasia or Oceania, and then at the bottom we have Antarctica where it's very cold. Then our oceans, in between America and Europe and Africa we have the Atlantic Ocean, Coming off Asia, round to America, because if you imagine this, uh, that the world is actually round, we have the Pacific Ocean. The Indian Ocean is just off the tip of India, because this is India here. The Southern Ocean is in the south, because this is down south. And then right at the top, we have the Arctic Ocean, which is near the Arctic. Well done, if you remembered all the continents. You may have struggled a bit more with the seas, because we haven't gone over those as much, but I just wanted to put that in so that you could um, try and remember that as well. So well done, everybody. Right, back to our Viking longships. So there's a Viking called Thorkel, that's just for the sake of this PowerPoint, he came from the north. And we've already talked about the fact they came from Scandinavia, which are the countries of Norway, Denmark and Sweden. OK, and you can see that they took their voyages across the seas. And one of the places they came to was the United Kingdom, which is here. OK, so. He's, Thorkel is a Viking from Norway, as they are some of them from Norway, some from Denmark, some from Sweden. There are lots of mountains in uh, Norway, as there are in, that, in that, those sort of areas. And there were sort of these long rivers called fjords, and they learnt to steer ships through these fjords. If you imagine, there were huge mountains with a little river running through it, and they learnt to navigate their boats through these sort of winding bits of the river, which wasn't easy to sail. And the water in those rivers was very, very deep. So they became quite strong um, salesmen or say, sailors um, when they were just living in their own land, okay? Scandinavia countries, Scandinavian countries can be quite cold. The land isn't the best for growing things and for farming. So a lot of the Vikings weren't very happy where they were living and wanted to go and explore and find better land. And that's one of the reasons they came to the United Kingdom and they, um, or Great Britain, and they set sail off on their boats, the boats that they needed to build, okay? And their Viking boats are called long ships, okay? And they, they made journeys that weren't very long, and then they went even further to America. And if it weren't for the way they built the boats so well, they wouldn't have been able to do this. So they came long, long distances in these ships. You can see from the pictures that they had a sail, but they also had several points where there were Vikings inside the boat rowing and using their oars to get themselves across, okay? There's a picture of one that's been reconstructed, okay? And they always had at the front these carved figureheads as well. And you can see the Vikings would have sat along the seats either side of the boat with an oar poking on the outside, going through the hole so that they could then steer them with their, um, sorry, power them along by manpower, by rowing, and they'd need lots and lots of Vikings to get those going across. So some of the facts about them, okay? They were very strong and beautifully shaped, and they were just built in such a way that they skimmed over the water, okay? They were designed in such a way that they could arrive straight up onto a beach, so then the Vikings could jump out and attack. They didn't have to 
Um, they didn't, they were quite shallow on, on the bit that sat in the water. So they didn't need to leave them far out at sea and then swim into land. They could bring them right up onto the beach. They were made of wood and very waterproofed by using tar that they got off pine trees. Pine trees were, uh, you get a lot of pine trees in Scandinavia, so they made use of the things in their natural environment. They had these huge square sails, which are often made of woven wool and brightly coloured, and the different boats would have different coloured sails. And when the wind was too strong for sailing, they rowed, okay? And when, they, when the wind was the right for sailing, then they put the sail up, and they, so they didn't row all the way, okay? But they would use the rowing when they, it was too much to, to actually uh, sail themselves. You will have noticed on the pictures that we've seen, they always had these shields around along the edge of them as well, the Viking shields. So anyone seeing this from afar would soon know that these were the Viking ships arriving, but they did come very quietly and stealthily and took people by surprise. One of the, it's one of the things they are most famous for is the dragon ships, okay? And these are these figureheads they had at the front of the ship, the prow, okay? The prow is the name for the front of the ship and they, have, they were carved with these dragon-like figureheads, okay? And the stern is the back of the ship. So you have the prow at the front, the stern at the back, Okay, and they also had a similar carving at the back. Okay, what reason do you think Vikings would put these dragon carvings on the front and back of their ships? Well done, if you think it's to scare people, to make people feel a bit threatened and worried, because they weren't particularly nice figures. They didn't exactly look like they were on ships of people coming in peace, did they? They were quite scary looking. So, they wanted to frighten people wherever they went. Now you are going to be designing your own longship today and I want you to be thinking what animal you might put at the prow and at the stern of your ship, okay? Do you want it to be a scary Viking ship or do you want it to not be too scary? Okay, so let's find out a little bit more about these ships, okay? So we've already said they had the prow to scare away the enemies. They had these shields along the boat, all along both sides. They were brightly coloured, okay? What was the purpose of having a shield on a boat, do you think? That's right, to help protect them if other people were firing arrows at them. All Viking ships had these huge sails. They believed they were made by the wives of the sailors. They made these very strong sails. They made them brightly coloured and they were often made from the sheep's wool and they covered them in animal fat and tar to strengthen them, to perhaps try and make them a little bit more windproof and waterproof because they were going to be sailing these ships long distances over the oceans. Okay, now they were some of the first ever ships to have a keel. Now the keel is the, the bit of the bottom of the ship that you don't normally see once it's in the water, but it helps to support that boat over the rough waves. Now, obviously these Vikings were sailing over the oceans, as we've said, and in the middle of the ocean, there, a storm could come up and they could be having water and rain lashing over the top of them, but their boat would stay steady. Can you imagine what it must've been like to be on a Viking ship? It can't have been very pleasant, if there was terrible weather, there wasn't really anywhere they could go to shelter and you'd have all these people in one space, okay? The keel enabled the boat to, to go smoothly as well. And then they'd have the oars coming out the side, but one large oar at the back to help steer the ship, which was very important for them getting to where they wanted to go. Okay, so just a couple of things to think about there. Why do you, what do you think about their design? And does it look like any other boat or ship you might see? These were some of the first of their kind, but other people over the years thought, good idea, we'll copy some of this. And we still see little rowing boats and things like that today and much larger boats that are made in a similar way in the, with those shapes. Now, they were very large boats. The smallest ones had 26 oars. Some had as many as 70. Now, if they had 70 oars, that means that you could have 35 people sat next to each other, all with an oar, one on either side, okay? Um, and... They were very expensive to build, okay? So you wouldn't get poor Vikings coming across in these boats. Right, so Orm the Viking is going to tell us about the Viking boats. So we've got a clip that we can watch here and I'm, um, I will show it to you now. Okay, let's have a look at this then. is a Viking longship, and we think it's just like the one the Vikings would have used to travel over to Scotland. Orm here is going to tell us a little bit about Viking longships and what life was probably like aboard one of these. Hi Orm, welcome aboard. Thank you. So 
is this what a Viking longship would have looked like? This is something like what one would have looked like. Um, this is a smaller one. They were all long and sleek and designed for going up rivers on raids. Um, some were so big that they had 120 warriors in them. This one only holds about 10, but the principle is exactly the same. Long, sleek, and fast. Orm, why is there the head of a fierce creature on the front of the boat? Well, it, it was um, it was meant to be the spirit of the boat, and it was meant to frighten the spirits of the land they were raiding. So that when they came to a friendly place, they took the, uh, the crowds off entirely so that they didn't frighten the spirits of the land, and that let everybody know they were coming in peace. What was life like on board? For example, where did they sleep? Well, for a start, you wouldn't have these benches, which would give you a lot more room. You would be sitting on things like these, which are sea chests. Um, and when the ship stopped for the night, they would take the sail and make a tent of it over the top of the boat, and they would sleep underneath it in sleeping bags, which they invented, out of, made them out of seal skin, because the deck's always wet, so you need somewhere dry and warm to sleep. What about the sail? What was that made of? Well, the short answer is we don't know. You can dig up boats that were buried with sheaths in them, you can raise them from the waters, but the material for the sails is all long since rotted away. We think they were made of wool and woven in strips uh, of different colours, but that's as much as we know. What about food? They had a fish called the cod, which um, they sun-dried rather than salted, and that lasted for ages, so they took that. They had bread, they had water, and if they needed to supplement their, their, their diet, they went in that store. That's what Vikings did. <laughs> they raided. So how did they know where they were going, as there were no compasses around then? Well, they steered by the stars and the sun when it was out. But mainly it was um, people who had already been there and told people who wanted to go there how to get there, like you telling someone you know, how to get to the corner shop. There's a, a place in the north of Scotland called Cape Wrath, and the word Wrath simply means right turn because it's there that you turn right to hit Orkney. Why were the ships designed specifically like this? Well, it was um, so that they could go up narrow rivers um, to where people thought they were safe and hit them and run away with all that they possessed. But they were raiders, pure and simple. Okay, so that's given us a little bit more information about these ships. And what you're going to do, your task for today, is to design your own Viking ship. So there's some things to consider on this slide. What's your sail going to look like? What fierce animal might you have at, have at the head and at the back of your boat? Or are you going to put a different animal on? Your boats do need to have the keel for the support, okay? And obviously your boat needs to have the shields on. So your principles of the boat need to be the same, but you can design it um, with whatever colors and with whatever shields you want to put on. Once you've done your design, what I would like you to do is make sure that you are labelling the different parts of your design, thinking about what a real Viking ship would have looked like. OK, and there's a nice picture of one there to give you some ideas as well. So you need to think about what parts need to be included, what materials will need to be used. So the wood and the animal fat and the tar to make things waterproof. How big is it going to be? and how will um, you use the materials to construct the Viking shape? So we're not actually gonna make it, but I just want you to design it and annotate it. That means label it with the important features of a Viking ship. It needs to be long and thin, that was their design. The base of it needs to be quite shallow so that it can get up onto a beach easily. Okay, so that is your task for today. And I hope you enjoy, I hope you enjoyed learning about it. And now you're going to try and design your own. Um, you can always have a look if you want to for extra information or if you want to find a different picture. If you just Google uh, Viking longships, you'll get lots and lots of choices of ships to give you an idea of what some of them might have been designed like and might look like. Okay, so happy designing everybody and I will see you soon. Bye.